A good paint job should always start with a good cleaning. Hey everyone, in this video, I will show the process of prepping and painting a Porsche 911. While I did learn a small amount of auto body in my youth at the family VW repair shop, it wasn't until much later when I wanted to paint my Porsche 914 that I really learned this well. I chose to learn to paint my own car because of two reasons really. For the quality I was looking for, my past experience showed me that I wasn't going to get it unless I did it myself. When I had more of a budget to work with, I found that most of the shops don't want projects like these because they make their money on collision work, insurance projects. Even recently, I approached a small shop to do some work, and they were just too busy with collision work to paint a whole car. This will be a long form video split over a few episodes. It will show the process of painting this Porsche 911 and I think it will be useful to anyone wanting to attempt this work themselves. While it is a lot of work, it can be broken down into one or two hours a day and complete this in a few months. You will have to practice if this is your first project. Note that this is not an exhaustive restoration. The underlying paint is still good as a base and we are not stripping the paint. Each car, of course, will have a different need and different budget. For this car, I spent about 80 hours on the bodywork, culminating in about two solid days of taping and then painting. Then about eight hours of cutting and buffing. If you like this content, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy. So one of the things that I like to do whenever I paint cars and make sure that the lines are all good like they should be. So I've been working on this rear hood a little bit so far this morning and I've gotten a little bit of improvement. Um, it was sticking up kind of high right here. I was able to adjust that. And then um, just checking the lines everywhere. Now these lines look okay, but watch this. So you pull the rear latch. Look what happens to that gap right there. And if you notice, you even got a chip right there. So what it looks like is you know how it has that ugly third brake light here it looks like that has maybe the weight of that or has has caused this little area to to sink down so i'm going to try to adjust that because we don't want especially when we have new paint here immediately start chipping it off so i was able to um to improve the situation just by pulling this up a little bit and really just just twisting this metal here and it sort of put this back into shape but i'm still concerned about this so what i'm going to do is i've got one of my um i've got a feeler gauge and i'm, I'm going to choose one of the larger 
the larger uh, ones and we're gonna um we're gonna make sure that we have um at least a minimum gap while this thing goes through its closing and opening cycle so in addition to using my sight now i can't really see the depression but when i when i um when i move my hand here i feel it so that's why it's always important to use all of your your senses especially being able to feel so it does feel like it needs to be just twisted out a little bit more here so we're going to pause here for a minute because I noticed when I am editing this video that I keep referring to this as a rear hood. I don't know if that's correct. Actually, in German, one would say Motorhaube, which really means motor hood. So perhaps I should be calling it a motor hood. Okay, so another thing to look at is um, sometimes these these lids get out of, um, they get twisted. You can tell that by looking here, when you just lift it up normally, do you see how this side is higher than this side? And um, so what we have to do there, um, really just don't don't be afraid to do, do stuff like this, it's just, Just the whole hood. Okay, and now when we're when we're looking at this now, we also notice that this side when it's closed, it sits a little lower than this side. Now we do have these little adjusters here. And if you look at them, this one's they're actually worn out. This one looks like it's it's been worn down quite a bit compared to that one so uh we probably should replace this one but for now we're just gonna we're gonna twist it out a little so it sits a little higher on this side that does seem to does seem to help things so that's an iterative process you might have to do that a couple times to get it just right but we do hear sort of a crunching sound when we when we close it and that's because this this is no longer um, lined up perfectly with the latch looking at it you can even tell this is before I've even loosened them you can tell look at the gap there it's where there this thing is sort of twisted in there okay so now if you look at the um, the way this lines up here this lines up really good right here on this side it seems like we are this is a little lower this little shim was under one of the uh, hinges there it doesn't need it over there at least not anymore but it does need it here so i'm just going to transfer this one to, over here and that should should correct that so you see we got actually um, we put it in there, and there's actually two of them now. There was a, there was one in there, so this one's gonna have two on this side. And we'll see how that works. So, okay. So first we got this um, trim piece here. It's aluminum, but it's painted black. We're gonna have to remove that first. Okay. So uh, so the owner wanted me to paint this car, but not remove the windshield. So. I've advised them against that because, although at first I thought we could maybe just tuck all this in here, um, it really doesn't tuck very well there. And so then we're going to end up with a, a paint edge there. And um, it won't be too bad, but it's just not going to come out as nice. So I, I'm just we're just going to go ahead and remove this windshield.
We have some obvious ones here. This one. And this gash. But then we have an, one that's a lot more a lot more subtle here in the way that this flare instead of having just a nice gradual transition it has a harsh transition right here something and it's probably what happened is when this got gouged it bent it pushed this in and it caused a crease right here we got dents all over this hood here where people have been pushing on it and even when we had the car put on the truck someone was pushing on it very strongly here First thing I want to try to address this door here that sticks out at the bottom here the owner doesn't really hasn't really seen it as a problem but to me this just bugs me here so I want to see if we can adjust that um, this door does have a lot of waves in it so it suggests maybe there was some issue here some accident or just some rough handling it to some point so i'd like to fix that first so we're gonna see what we can do on that now this door opens almost 90 degrees so i believe there's something wrong with this uh door closer we're gonna see about fixing that as well was loose <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna tighten it now in a new position We'll see how it goes. Okay. That doesn't close at all. <laughs> oh. Now, I have adjusted this here. I pushed this door hinge all the way in as far as it can go, and we still have this this big protrusion here. So I'm thinking that this door, the skin has been pulled off or something like that. So we're gonna try something else. So what I think has happened here is that because of the problem with the door stay not functioning, this door has been constantly been opening wide. And then every time it opens, look at that, it hits the pillar right here. And I believe that had the effect of pushing the outer skin sort of like this every time. So we're gonna see if we can Compensate for that a little bit by um, adjusting the fender. Now, the last point that we're going to do here, we have an awful lot of dents right here on this lower portion of this lid, all along here. And this comes from people pressing down the lid right here. And you can't really blame them. There's not a whole lot of support. The support is really 
just here there's a little bit of support you don't have any center support you see there's a gap so anytime you close it if you don't press right here you're gonna dent it eventually or if uh, like what happened with this car to pushing it to get it on the ramp there was some brute force put here and that just dents it so I took some time to press out the dents from the back side. What I'm going to use is a uh, an abrasive ab abrasive disc. Basically, we're going to roughen this area up. I don't want to actually uh, get into the metal. I'd like to leave this as a base. So all I'm going to do is roughen this up wherever these dents are. And then we're going to put a skin coat of, of filler here. And so that's the look of it there. In some spots where we had metal already exposed, I went ahead and ground that out a little bit to get any corrosion out of there. But basically, we're just going to give it some tooth. We um, This paint is still very good. It's still holding, protecting the metal very good. That's why I don't, I don't eliminate it. I just rough it up, and then we're going to put some uh, filler on here. So here I don't have any need to get into the metal, so I'm just using some 40 grit sandpaper to rough up the surface. Okay, so we had a dent right here, and I used the hammer to basically flatten it back out. And now we're going to just roughen it up.
Okay, this door has a has dents all over it. It is creased. I don't know if you can see, but it's creased right here. This is right around the area where the structural support is. And then this part is all pushed in. So that's going to take we're going to try to push it out from the inside this bottom part here and uh, maybe hammer it a little here and we're going to see how far that goes and probably end up with a skim coat over this whole this whole door okay so since this door has so many waves in it i went ahead and just did a rough sand over the whole surface and this exposed to me by the glossy parts are where the uh, the dents are still so basically now that I've I can see that I'm going to roughen those spots up and then um, the whole thing is going to get skimmed skimmed over with uh, filler and then uh, through the filler blade and then the subsequent sanding that's how we'll level the whole thing again So when I do body work like this, I like to use a premium grade body filler. Uh, this is different than what you know what you're probably familiar with, which is the Bondo brand. Uh, this is a premium grade version of that, basically, and it will go on a lot uh, lighter, and it will go on where the sanding is a lot easier, and that makes a big difference. When I say it goes on light, what I mean by that is once it's on and your, your product is finished, you cannot tell too much a difference between a panel that has filler on it than, than one that doesn't. For instance, if you were to tap it and you know it makes a sound, it's not going to be much different than one that doesn't have any filler on it. And it's not only 3M that makes uh, these this sort of filler. There's other companies that make them, and they're all very good too. But you want to go with a premium grade lightweight filler, and you'll be much happier by doing that. And here I'd be using 80 grit paper to give it its first initial shaping. Now for the larger regions, I'm going to use the larger um, block. You kind of want to use the largest block that you can. And obviously when you get into contours like this, you need to use a smaller block in Okay, so this is what it looks like after we sanded it one time already. You can tell we got some low spots here. 
and uh, we're gonna so we're gonna put another layer of filler on there and likewise for any other spots okay so here's what we've accomplished so for the uh, rear lid um, we've got it aligned now it no longer sticks up high here anymore I've adjusted it twisted this metal so that we no longer interfere here when we open and uh, so everything looks looks real good on all sides and then uh, started doing some filler work here where all these uh, dents were coming around here working out these dents I've pulled this one out so we have a little filler there a little filler here and then on the hood we're gonna have a little filler right there very small dent here and then we have this thing we're working out too and then this door this door is is going to be um quite a chore we've got it's just got a lot of waves in it and um we've beat it down so it doesn't stick out so much there anymore but we've got a lot of um waviness here that we need to take. okay so now i'm going through and i'm sanding the second layer of uh filler that i've put over this one thing to uh always be aware of is when you're sanding and of course you're going to use two hands to do this um is to put very light pressure because if you put too much pressure then what starts to happen is that you're you're actually deforming the metal as you sand and that is just going to end up with uh, an, a very poorly uh, filled dent that you'll spend a lot of time just just to get that right so light pressure that way you're not changing the shape of the metal as you sand over it another thing to uh, to keep in practice is when you sand you're going to want to sand sort of an x pattern across the uh across the uh the damaged area and what you'll want to do you, you, you're you're trying to always keep part of it rested on site sort of like a good area so that you can you can uh sand down the uh the the uh, area in question so so i would approach it from that side and then I would approach it from that side more or less resting on this resting on that and then you get that nice little contour over across it so I've sanded this pretty much as much as I need to and now when I go over it with um, with my hand it feels more or less okay here but when I come over here I feel like right here that it sort of goes down so I'm going to need a little more filler right in this spot right here now here I'm filling a more deeper area and over this side, I'm just filling in some scratches. So I apply more, a little more pressure on that when I do that. Whereas here, I'm trying to build up so I don't apply as much pressure.
And one thing that really helps just keep things clean is just get a little shop vac. And instead of just blowing all this off and getting it everywhere in your garage, just vacuum it up. <laughs> Thank you.